Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 4. This has two winners, which has never happened before, but of course it's controversial. So let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. Whoops, another thumbs up and subscribe. All right, please forgive me for that error. So here are our artists holding their paintings that they submitted in order to be on the program. We have a cityscape here, very strong and confidently done. Yeah, I, I love the mixture of, of you know, a landscape. It just, it means any, basically anywhere outside, right? Basically. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, I love the softness of all that. And look at the creation of distance. Oh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does today. I, I really, I really like his palette. Now, it's a very bright and very green day. We'll look at the site in about a second, but we'll continue to look at the artists first. This one is a little ambiguous for me. I'm not sure what's happening there, which of course means the judges will love it because that's what they do. And the, it, 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 it's also a very large size. She's not going to be able to work that large today. This one, we're going to be talking about this a little bit in this episode because this is her submission and I'll just preview and let you know she does extremely well in this episode. And honestly, I don't get it. I don't get it. She will use that same palette today. Now remember that because we're looking at basically greens. And I'm a great believer in color value swap outs when they're done well. But we stay tuned on that one. This is very interesting because it's an interior. And I didn't know that they would judge an interior to be on the program. There's so much detail in there and, and such an expressive use of neutrals. Even to the point of, can you see on the far right where he has like a paint that looks like it's chipping and, and all of that? So he's, he can really deal with texture. Now, this is the kind of painting I love. I love this kind of painting, this kind of painting that makes me happy. I know the judges are gonna look at it as being, you know, standard. They've seen it all before. But, you know, the assignment is Landscape Artist of the Year. She did it, but you already know, they're not gonna honor that. Now here's another one, which is more a seascape, you know, in a boat. Really, really uh, beautiful work on the water. It's a little hard to see from this particular angle, but she's, she's not a colorist and that's fine. Uh, and so I don't, don't have a lot to say about this one. This person is going to do a print today. I believe a linoleum print. So she's, she's not going to have the kind of time that she had to do the detail that she did on her submission piece. But that's the case, and that's, that's the game. That's how this program works. They are at Studley Royal Gardens. So just because I want to be professional, even though, you know, obviously I'm not, I make no money at this, uh, we're going to start with a drone shot, because all documentaries these days start with drone shots. You have to have a drone shot, usually over trees and some sort of hawk sound in the background to make it all moody and everything. Pretty amazing place, isn't it? Look at all those greens. Now, I live in a place that's very green in the summer, and so what it does is it teaches you how to really make a palette of greens because they have to be very varied. Otherwise, it's a wall of green and it sort of looks like the Wizard of Oz. Now, there is a structure that they are across a pond from some sort of, uh, don't they call it a folly or something when something like this is in a grand garden? I don't, I don't know why they call it that, but yeah, there you can see it. So for me, it, it, I would really have to think really hard about how to make this compositionally interesting because there's so much horizontal going on here. So I'm gonna be thinking a lot about diagonals. Now let's just take a quick look at the pods each person has a pod which protects them a little bit from the, the sun and the rain, but certainly not from the wind or any other w weather conditions that are going to happen. And if you're a plain air painter, you already know that. This is, you're, you're, you're accustomed to that. But you would be able to decide what day you wanted to paint or not. You don't get to decide here. Now, four hours later, the artists are going to turn their easels around and we get to see what they've done. And the judges will start to do some assessing. And um, just hang in there with me because this is one heck of a rocky episode. And like I said, we are going to have two winners. Okay, enough about that. Here are 
all of the paintings lined up just so you could get an idea of the scale and you can see the structure far behind. So just keep that in your mind for a second. Oh boy, look, the easels are held down with sandbags. Yeah, you ever been out in plain air and had your easel topple and everything else too? I think we all have. Oh boy, what a moment that is. Now this is a woman who had the swimming pool painting. Someone needs to explain to me how she looked at what we just looked at when it comes to the gardens and she comes up with this painting. I didn't have a problem with this painting necessarily until the judges just went crazy over it. Even though the way the program was edited, that really surprised me because they only showed this one shot of it. So I didn't see it coming. Usually when they prefer a painter, they will spend a lot of time talking with them or they will keep the camera on them quite a bit. Here's our second one. I really like this because it's a view of looking into the structure and then the opposite, looking out from the structure. It's just really inventive and the painting is absolutely exquisite. I love when big patches of paint are used to mass different forms and it's created that reflection from the sky in the pond. I it, this is this is very accomplished to me and to do the two together is, is, I think is really kind of cool. Here's here's a detail. I I love scenes where um, you look through something, you know, it's sort of that tunnel vision. It's such a great device to be able to make uh, the illusion of space. Because remember, everything's a flat surface and therefore everything that you create is an illusion. I think I think this person did it just a, a really dynamic, really exciting job. And there's a lot of triad work going on in those grays. If you look at the grays on the wall, see how yellow is mixed in there with some reds and then on the opposite side some blue in with the red as well. All of those uh, grays are carefully mixed. But if you squint your eye, boy, is there a good value range. Now here's the print. And I just don't have a lot to say about the print. I just don't feel qualified to really judge a print necessarily. Uh, it looks uh, looks really good to me. It must have been a bridge structure that was nearby. Remember, you can pivot in your pod. Pivot in your pod. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> Out of context. That sounds extremely weird. Pivot in your pod. So you can look in any direction you want to. There's some good work on reflections there. And oh, I love that moment with a little goose or maybe it was a swan. It doesn't matter. It's very interesting to see how, you know, you have to use just really black and white to create these illusions of gray and mid-tones. I don't know all that's involved in that, but I admire the eye that, that can discriminate in that way. Now, this one is, uh, I, this one, I just don't like the colors. I just don't like the colors of it. Now, maybe you do. You know, everybody sees color differently. For me, this had a great deal of harshness to it and very little, even, well, I shouldn't say very little. I mean, they definitely have lost and found edges in the foliage, but overall, it's suffering from that wall of green issue. Oh, look at that wall of green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of wish they had picked up a big brush at one point and made some of those bigger shapes that need to be made and then maybe closer up, then go to the smaller brush. It's all kind of texturally the same for me. And also when I squint my eyes, it's also very tonally about the same. Now, this one I'm bringing up because this person brought his own prop. He put this vase that he had on the table in front of him. So he was determined to incorporate that vase. This is a detail of the foliage that he did. Now we're going to pull back and look at the vase. I don't know what the significance of the vase on the table is. I do understand why it's a good device to create space. And I think that's what he was doing here. And I also think he did it because generally landscapes are horizontal and so you're going to need a vertical. And so he thought in terms of problem solving, I'm going to solve that problem off the site and then it doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to have my my verticals in, in place to balance against the uh, horizontals. This one is um, kind of reminds me a little bit of khaki. Uh, not khaki. What do you call it? That camouflage. <laughs> you know, the colors they use in camouflage. Um, yeah, all tonally green. Un, un, the canvas was primed with a, a light orange, which was smart. I just wish it had a little bit more color. Oh, I like it better from far away because that incorporates the sky reflections. I really like this one, but it, I don't, would not say it, put, it sets me on fire. I almost wish there were some reds and purples down where it's really, really dark 
And maybe there are. I just wish they had um, investigated that maybe a little bit more. Wow, it looks, wow, look how bright that green is now it, when we come close up. Oh, that's because it's a new painting. All right, whoops. So this is the, the next artist, and he incorporated those that the water structures to be able to create some angles. I think compositionally this was really, really smart, and the bright green certainly adds an excitement to my eye. This is the part that I like the best, just this little detail of the, the pond and the reflections. I think that that's extremely accurate and creates that illusion of some sparkle and some reflection. And you can see from far away, I, I kind of wish it could be cropped in some way. Something, uh, you know, is just a little off when it comes to uh, the composition. Or maybe not. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I really don't know. It's, it's a very challenging composition, like I said. It's so horizontal. Now, this one, I'm just going to flat out say it. This is just not my taste. I do not like this painting at all. And it is just simply taste. The paint is put on very thick. I don't like the color mixes. Uh, it doesn't describe anything to me. It looks like so similar to when you go to clean your palette and this is what you're left with. I know this was done intentionally and if you love it, I'm really, really sorry. I, I mean, I'm sorry that we disagree, but we can agree to disagree because it's art and that's why we're watching this program because we want to see different points of view, but uh, it's not my taste. Final judging begins. And so all the artists who have been working all day, remember they had to travel here, which means you didn't sleep in your own bed. You had to bring all your supplies, which must be exhausting. You got to stand. Well, I think they give you a chair, but generally you're standing up in, in the elements. And by now, just by judging what the contestants are wearing, it, it certainly looks like it got to be pretty uh, clouded over and probably cold. And if you've worked with cold hands, it's, it's extremely hard. So three people will be selected to go on to the semifinals of this episode, and only one will go forward. But I've already told you for the first time ever, they picked two. So this is the first one that they picked, and they just gushed over this. They love this. They love this. They love this. They love this. So be it. This is the second one, which is a much more standard landscape, and I, I believe I did compare it to camouflage. It looks better uh, here. Oh, boy. Well, they have, as usual, they've left my favorites behind. Although this is one of my favorites. I do like this. See, I was starting to get a little sad and then that made me happy again. This, this, is, this is masterful, I think. And I would like to see more from this person. And the other two, I, I don't, don't really care to see more of. So you already know one of them is gonna go forward and you probably already know which one. So here are the three artists with the painting, with their paintings and before the judges make their decision, we get to see their submission painting, which is the one on the left, next to what they did in the four hours today. Like I said, this is a swimming pool painting on the left. It's inexplicable to me why she got chosen, but so be it. And I could have accepted that if she had made some kind of attempt at a reasonable... I, I've said enough. I've said enough. So. This is what she uh, submitted, and this is what she did in the four hours. Let's look at the next one. This one, oh, darn, wow, yay. Now I see why they picked her, because the one on the left is so fantastic. And she, she just, um, she didn't have the kind of day, really, she wasn't on her game, but boy, she can be on her game. On that one on the left, when she has unlimited time, that's a colorist at work. That's really excellent. Now I'm excited again. Yes, I do want to see more from her. Oh, and of course, yes, yes, he's shown such expertise. How do they not pick him? But hashtag Joe is always wrong. Uh, we are about to see. Remember, there are going to be two finalists. I don't know how they could pass this person up. Well, let's hope they don't, but we're about to find out. So the two winners are... Dun, 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 dun. I went a little early there on the excitement about the winners, um, but there will be two winners. Must mean that the judges very much disagreed is my best guess on this one. I think all three have to agree for it to be a yes. So here we go. Uh, these are the winners. 
the one on the left is, with the red who had done the swimming pool is our winner and the one on the right who had done that interior with a lot of texture is our winner as well. I will never understand why the one on the left is suggested and maybe it's just to make viewership happen. I, I don't know. Remember, however, to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>